Well, hey guys, playing with a output booster for an LM386. If you remember my video, well, I think it was back in the spring of this year, 2015, I made a booster stage for LM386 and I, I considered it unsuccessful. It sort of worked, it did have more output. And again, to uh, go over the reason why I'm doing this, well, number one, it's, you know, it's just experimentation. It's fun. You could always just get a more powerful chip. But, you know, like I say, I want to play around with this and see if I can get something that works. The reason for making a booster output stage is if you want to run this thing at 12 volts, 8 or 4 ohms, well, you can't really do it directly because the uh, output current really sags under load. Plus, you know, it's no provision for heat sinking it at, at such a uh, higher output. And as the current sags, you won't get that output anyway. So I make a booster output stage here and we'll take a look at it. Okay. Well, it's a pretty simple circuit. It does look kind of complex here. I'm using Darlington transistors, so everything in, in the dotted line here is inside the transistor. So it's, it's really not as complicated as it looks. It just has the three um, active components, three transistors. Because I have four base emitter junctions to contend with, I have to have four diodes here for biasing. But instead, I'll just use one transistor and some resistors, this one being variable, so I can adjust the bias current. This transistor is often called the VBE multiplier. Right here is the biasing transistor. In practice, you normally want it to be mounted on the heat sink for thermal tracking. I don't have it for this demonstration. I'm on a current limited supply, so if I do have thermal runaway issues, you know, it's not going to cause any harm. In fact, this circuit has had thermal runaway a couple times. I set it up, walked away, came back, and it was got real hot and was drawing a lot of current. But because of the limited supply, it, you know, no harm was done. And I'd have to solder leads on it and glue it on and all that stuff. I don't want to monkey with that. And just for this demonstration, this will work fine. Okay, I'll adjust the bias here. Right now it's pretty much cold. No bias current. As I turn up the dial, there it goes. And uh, I'll bias it at maybe 50 milliamps or so. And I can run it class A and really crank it up. But that doesn't leave a lot of power left from this power supply. So I really can't do that. Plus my heat sinking is really not big enough for running it class A. I'll just set the bias a little bit right there. And I have a large enough heat sink. We shouldn't have any thermal runaway issues. Okay, I have uh, music player ready to go here. Running it at 15 volts. 4 ohm load. I have this speaker here connected both sides. Connected and parallel together for 4 ohm load. And uh, just give it a listen.
That sounds pretty good. I don't hear any distortion. You will notice that I do not have the output stage included in the negative feedback. One reason is I want to see how it performs you know, before including it. You always want to get your circuits as low as possible distortion before you include them in the negative feedback loop. And uh, I'll show you how bias affects the sound. As I turn the bias down, you can see it's as it's heating up, it's drawing more current. So that's why you want this actually mounted there. But anyway, let me uh, put the music back on and adjust the bias. I'll turn the bias off so you can hear what it sounds like. Pretty bad. Let me turn the bias back up. Okay, I've hooked up a non-inductive 4 ohm load to the amplifier and scoping it right at the load. And you can see there, I have the bias turned down and you can see a notch. Actually surprised it's not even worse. But if I turn up the bias, you can see that goes away. Let's bring up the bias more and more. Right there. Completely gone. Okay, so I adjusted the input lower. You can see the crossover distortion more apparent now. That'll allow me to set the bias up. See, as I crank up the bias, that little notch goes away. Completely linear. There's still a little notch. So if I bring it up, it's clear. Now if you look at the blue waveform, that's the uh, FFT, or the um, Spectrum Analyzer mode on the scope. And I'm looking near the bottom here. This peak goes, you know, it goes off the screen, way off the screen. And you can see there's just some noise down there, but there's, there's no harmonic showing. That's really impressive. I wouldn't expect that at all. I mean, there's no negative feedback. I would think there would be some non-linearity. If I had a, a real good spectrum analyzer, yeah, certainly I could see stuff, but I mean, this would be well below 0.1%, I would think. Yeah, that's almost noise floor. Very interesting. Okay, as I crank up the level, you can see that notch, that harmonic pop up because we're clipping. But we're only clipping on the top waveform. Why is that? Well, I'm putting my signal in down here, and there's some voltage drop across this transistor. So we're not getting as much current swing, or uh, I should say output voltage swing, from this upper transistor. What I need to do is, you know, change this to a constant current source. I could add a you know, another transistor or use a bootstrap type configuration like they used to do with the older audio amplifier ICs. And I think I'll do that because I just need a couple resistors and a capacitor. Okay, so what I did is took out the 1K resistor and put two 470s in and in between them connected a capacitor um, that should be 100 microfarads and connected that to the output. And you see as I disconnect it, 
and connect it see how the output increases gives it a little bit more output current but I'm still getting early clipping on the positive part of the sine wave the positive peak is still clipping well it didn't make sense why that was still clipping so I thought about it for a second and I figured out well it's got to be the LM386 so I moved the scope probe to the output of the LM386 which feeds the input of this output stage and uh, yeah sure enough it's clipping it's what's causing the clipping it doesn't have a bootstrap circuit and it clips asymmetrically even though it doesn't have much of a load I mean it's it's a very very light load to drive this because you know it, this is doing all the heavy lifting to drive the output and still it's just a limitation of this chip so it's going to limit how much power I can get out of the circuit and uh, I'll get a quick power measurement here well, that's about as much as I can get out of this thing. 2.77 volts squared divided by 4 ohms. Just shy of 2 watts. 1.92. Well, that's certainly far more capable than the amplifier or the LM386 alone can do. Now, it's unfortunate though that it clips asymmetrically so let's find out let's estimate here so it's starting to clip on the bottom so I'll just stop that right at the point where it's not clipping and two volts per division let's see it's two four six eight eight point something and we'll say it'll I'll just say nine volts it actually probably could go higher 9 volts, half of that is 4.5 um, times 0 0.707, inverse the square root of 2 is what that is. And that's probably the RMS output voltage we could get had it clipped symmetrically. Divide that, oh whoops, square that, then divide it by 4. 2.5 watts and yeah that, that's that would be pretty good I mean that's about what you're gonna get from 12 volt supply I mean I have the rail set exactly at 12 volts so yeah probably ideally you could get up to 3 watts but real world the amplifiers performing is about as good as it can Well, as the final experiment here, I crank the power supply up to its maximum of 15.4 volts just to see what I can get out of this thing. 3.75 volts or so. And coming out about 3.47 watts. So yeah, that's that's pretty good getting that much power from a LM386 with a booster output stage. And for now, thanks for watching.